Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friend, Sean Falk. Hi. Charles Boda. Hello. And Steve Porter. Hello. I'm back in the production nook off camera, where he belongs, the ginormous head of Ryan Clavin. <laughs> I really, really, really want to make him happy. Call him that. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, this week's episode, we are going to talk about the best places at Walt Disney World to eat outdoors. Places that we love, where you can have a decent meal, either table service or counter service, outside with a great view. Um, and at first, I'm like, God, you know, where, where can you do that? And then as we started going through the list, there's actually quite a few places, enough so that we've um, limited this to places where we'd like to... Wow, the face Craig is just making right now is going to haunt my dreams. <laughs> Thank God you people can't see what I just saw. Um, I, I wanted to limit it. We were able to limit it to places where I think the food is at least halfway decent, or at least I can recommend something there that's worth eating. So this is in no particular order. Um, the first one that, that came up was Nomad Lounge over at uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom. This is part of Tiffin's Restaurant. This is the lounge side. Great place to sit outside. Um, Charles, you said this is like your one of your favorite places in the world. Yeah. Uh, one time I was with Steve and we randomly had like articles to write or something to put up. Um, and we just decided to stop by there and type something up really quick. And ever since then, like if I've got some time and I want some like <clears throat> out of the sun relaxation time and everybody in Animal Kingdom occasionally wants some out of the sun relaxation time, just chilling out out there. It's got the wraparound thing right on the water. The porch. Um, the yeah, wraparound porch right on the water. It's it's covered enough to where even in inclement weather, you know, rain or anything like that, you're probably not going to get wet or soaked. And it's just a really, really cool, comfortable place to sit down. Not it to is mention, a little pricey. But. Not to mention that the food over there is phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really mm -hmm. good. I mean, most times I go there, I will, I'll just sit and I'll get a press pot of coffee and just finish that press pot of coffee and just relax and maybe write something up or just chill out and enjoy myself. But it's just, it's one of those like... Because of the view, you forget that you are surrounded by a theme park for a second because the view is straight up on the water and you see the like foliage and everything. So you don't see the people walking by. You don't see crowds. You don't see all of that. So it's like a little separate private kind of like nook out of the way of everything. And that's what I really like about it. Yeah, the chairs there are really comfortable too. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really worried when uh, Pandora opened that this was going to get uh, over flooded with people because it's right at the entrance to Pandora. Um, but it really is, I mean, yes, there are more people. It used to almost be empty and you could have, you know, that mm -hmm. whole Porsche to yourself depending on when you were there. Um, but it's still not too bad. I think I've n I still have never had to wait for a seat out there. Yeah. So uh, I still think it's a great option. And now, can you order off the main menu from Tiffin's out there, or is it just a separate lounge menu? I can't remember. I think I've only seen the separate lounge menu. I've never asked to order anything or eat out there. But even but that lounge menu, very, very good. Yeah, it is a little pricey, though. I remember um, I had a cheese plate that ran somewhere between 12 and $16, but it was like four pieces of very good cheese. But for like a full meal, I don't know, appetizer, drinks, coffee, that kind of thing, though, it's definitely a way to go. And they, they're... They, it was extensive. Uh, I think the first time we went out there, we had like a platter of like different chicken wings and, and stuff. So they definitely have meal type stuff that you can get. All right. Nothing. I've never I've never been there, so okay. I don't know. I ain't been to Tiffins or nothing. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know nothing about no yeah, Tiffins. Maybe, maybe someday I'll have a comment on. All right, Hattie right McDaniel's. Um, all right. Next, uh, we've actually combined these two locations uh, into one item here. Because their view is the same, but both have, you know, decent food. Over at Epcot, we're talking about Rose and Crown over in the UK, and we're talking about La Cantina de San Angel, uh, the counter service restaurant right across from the Mexico Pavilion. Um, both have uh, d b better than average food, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful view mm -hmm. of uh, the lake at Epcot. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're lucky enough to get a spot, over there for the fireworks. Um, phenomenal view of the fireworks from there. Um, but uh, Steve, what do you think of those two places? 
Uh, I think they're both That's great. That's great. How about you, Trump? <laughs> uh, I think they're both great. I think it just depends on your budget. So if you are down for quick or, – or just the time that you want to spend. If you don't want to sit down at a sit-down restaurant at, while you're in a theme park um, and you just want that quick service – or if you're just on a budget and you want that quick service, uh, San Angel is a good – or the, the La Cantina, it's important to preface that, um, is right, a great option. San Angel Inn is the one inside yeah. and you don't don't want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that quick service outside, it, it, you know, great if you're on a budget or if you don't want to wait too long uh, waiting, you know, for a sit-down restaurant. And then, uh, I mean, the Rosen Crown's great. And then they have a really good tea there, um, not having to do with the great view that it has, but – they have an iced tea that's delicious. I think their bangers and mash are outstanding. Yeah. And the scotch eggs, I love the scotch eggs over also, there. Also, if you've had the fish and chips outside, but you've never had, they're different inside. I, I, I don't know if that's true, but they taste different to me. Maybe it's just all in my head. It's, it's the, all that tea you're drinking. Maybe. That's that special something. Yeah, I don't know. Now, have you experienced either of these? I have. Yeah, I've done. Uh, I've done both. I I, I like the view at both because it is kind of the same view, but um, just the other side of the park. I don't care that much about. I really don't care that much about Mexican food, but um, the 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 outdoor uh, Mexican pavilion food there, I think it's okay. I don't. It, it's just not something that. It shines in comparison right, to what's inside. To what's inside, but for, as far as Rose and Crown goes, which you you can actually go to the fish and chips cart outside, and there's plenty of tables without having to actually eat in Rose and Crown, and That's you would true. still get that view. Um, but I had Rose and Crown for the first time back during the candlelight processional or whatever, so right before Christmas, and on family vacations we never did Rose and Crown because. I don't really know much about British food. Like, uh, you know, that wasn't, we were like, oh, British food. Like, what do they have, really? And um, so our group went, and I loved everything. I tried pretty much what everyone had from the menu, and I liked all of it. The desserts were amazing. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them were amazing. So, And, you know, I, I realized this after I finally went to England. You know, in, uh, British food has a really bad rap. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. You know, it's all I ever heard. British food is horrible. Yeah. British food is horrible. So the first time I went, and we weren't eating in, you know, high-end places or anything. We were just going, like, wherever we could find. And, you know, trying to order stuff that, like, bangers and mash and uh -huh. things like that. I'm like, well, this is really good. I can honestly tell you, the only less than stellar meal I've ever had in England was at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant at the Savoy hotel on the West end. Um, because I made the mistake of ordering steak. Do not order steak in the UK. Not that it's bad meat per se. It's just nowhere near as good as ours. We definitely have the upper hand on that. Um, so their meat just kind of tastes different and has a different yeah. texture to it and not as good as ours. So I was just disappointed. Um, but, uh, I, I, that's why I think Rose and Crown is fantastic. I love going there. My mother loves going there. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a regular thing for yeah. us. And they do also have the um, – when we were there, it was raining really bad that day. It was uh, Actually, it wasn't raining. It was freezing. It was like – well, freezing for us um, here in Florida. But they were able to lower these like vinyl – panels kind mm -hmm. of that were see-through and so you could still sit outside but not have to be freezing outside so mm -hmm. they do have that as well for like inclement weather and stuff so all right uh the third one on our list is also a combo because both of these are also in the same location and have very similar views this is uh paddlefish the rooftop on paddlefish and the boathouse over both over at disney springs um both have gotten mixed reviews from us uh, where Paddlefish was concerned, we pretty much all agreed, stick to appetizers and dessert. Mm -hmm. uh, Boathouse, we all agreed, stay away from the steak. Um, but, uh, you know, at Paddlefish, they do have this great rooftop deck where you can you can eat. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, a, a bar up there, I believe, mm -hmm. with an incredible view of Disney Springs. And especially if you're there around sunset. My first time after it reopened... Uh, for the media party, we were there at, at sunset, and it was just absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and then, of course, the boathouse, sitting out on the deck mm -hmm. at the boathouse. Gorgeous view. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous view. Really comfortable, especially if you get a nice day. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the weather we're having right now, it's in the 70s, it's sunny, clear skies. 
that's like ideal for that kind of yeah. that kind of dining. Yeah. And then if you're out on the dock and you have like the nice breeze coming off the water, it's like perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm definitely one of those people where I don't know. The food tastes better if I'm eating outside. Yeah. Um, there's something about it that I love. Of course, you know, in the the warmer months, that's a real challenge. A lot of people don't want to be sitting outside. But you know, tip um, during those summer months, if you don't mind sitting out in the heat, you're probably going to get a table a lot faster if you're willing to sit outside. Yeah. And see, I'm on the opposite. I will never pick to sit outside if I don't have to. I'd rather eat inside the restaurant. And so. Um, that, well, know, it's not but, surprising to me at all that you and I are completely the opposite, opposite on that. I, would, on I like sitting inside the restaurant. Um, there's a lot that can happen outside while you're eating, but um, the uh, the definitely for paddlefish and boathouse. I well, like, what, you know, like what neighborhoods. Kind of, yeah, really, what kind of places are you <laughs> eating? In? I mean, part of it you're paying to be in the restaurant as well, but I don't. No, I'm paying for the food. I know. But, also, uh, isn't depends, this whole but, video about how great it is to eat outside? outside. <laughs> I just don't like eating outside. It is. It is great well, to have the view. You, that in, kind of thing. In, I, fair, in fairness to Sean, that was Charles's idea to yeah, do this topic. I, I, a great I, idea. I love the view, of, like, and it is nice to see. I just we'll see it move on, but I uh, and go back inside and eat. But they, uh, <laughs> but I will say, when we ate outside at Boathouse, that was very, very, very enjoyable to be outside mm-hmm. sitting and enjoying that food. I sometimes just sit around and think yeah. about that meal and how good it was and, and remember back to it because yeah. it was one of the best meals I've had since we started doing this. Yeah, and the thing about the boathouse too is let's say that you don't like eating outside, right? Um, before or after your meal, one of the cool things about it is, yeah, it's technically, you know, it's on the same lake that um, Paddlefish is on. The view is different though because they've got all these classic, or not classic antique boats. They're all like some of them are like classical design, but they've got all these really cool, really unique designed boats. So before, or after you eat it, even if you sit on side, take a walk out, go on the dock, look at these. They are completely awesome. They're really impressive. I didn't expect it to be nearly as cool as it was, mm-hmm. but they have all these like retro designs, futuristic designs, retro futuristic designs, just like classy, the- like weird Cadillac boat kind of things. Um, and it, yeah, like just that entire thing, even if you sit inside, there's still something outside for you to walk out and see, which is really fun. Yeah, those boats are like pieces of art. Yeah. Like the, I don't know if Disney had them made or if they went out and found them, but they're all like hand, I don't know how much time and effort well, went into That's a third party boats, restaurant, but... so I don't think Disney did it. I okay, think that's... then they must have, uh, yeah. I assumed they were privately owned because some of them have like personalization to it, but I, I don't know. Like, uh, I think there are probably plaques that explain like this one was built in this time or, mm. or by this person or something like that. But um, yeah, they're all really unique and individual. And then with the paddlefish, you've got the like the decor is part of it too. So not only do you have that beautiful view, but with the nighttime light lighting that they start, you know, once it gets to around sunset, like just eating there outside you've got the nice breeze that's coming off but like all of the all of the boat lighting that's around makes this really really unique cool setting to sit and hang out in it's kind of swanky but still casual mm-hmm. all right and finally um i have not had a chance to get over there to try this out yet but the guys all have and rave about it guys are point over at wilderness lodge so those of you who've been there, tell me why Geyser Point belongs on this list. It's the best place to go on Walt Disney World property if you need to escape Disney. You can go to Geyser Point and you look out on Bay Lake and you would have no idea that you're at Walt Disney World. It just looks like you're on a beautiful lake in the middle of, like, I don't know, the Adirondacks or wherever where there's beautiful lakes on the water. <laughs> um and so I love going there just to, if I'm going to go into the Magic Kingdom and I'm going to get my Disney fill later in the day, and I can just come out, have it, calm down, have a drink, and just <laughs> escape to a totally different world, it feels like. So I love it there. Yeah. It's, um, uh, I think, I think it was a little warm the one time that I went over there. And the breeze off the lake still keeps it really cool. It's really shaded. It's really nice. The food was very good, too. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's quiet for the resorts and for on property and everything like that. And you don't see anything. It's kind of like w- what I mentioned about Tiffin's, just that idea of like forgetting where you are, forgetting that you're in a part, like the illusion of wilderness 
which is really cool. Um, and just once again, really relaxing, really enjoyable. They've also made have made some adjustments adjustments to their menu uh, out there a couple times for good and bad reasons. Uh, they also have on top of that, that's like their quick service side of things. And then they also have, you know, like bar type food, like you can get edamame and a couple other mm-hmm. like small snack type foods. Um, so I just, and they have a bunch of TVs too. So if there's sports on and, you know, you want to watch that. So there's just a bunch of great options out there. Have you been over there? Mm-mm. No, I haven't. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was yawning and I was trying to close my mouth really quick because you looked over here and I was like, it's about to come on the cameras about to get on me. Everybody pump up the excitement. Yeah. Just... <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Our list of the best places at Walt Disney World to eat outdoors. Nomad Lounge over at Tiffin's Restaurant at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, the Rose and Crown and uh, La Cantina de San Angel over at Epcot and World Showcase. Uh, the rooftop over at Paddlefish or the deck out at the Boathouse, both at Disney Springs and Geyser Point over at Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort. So there you have our list, and we hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week with another episode of the Disney Dining Show. Have a great week, everybody.